Hello. So I'm here to discuss something very important. What I'm about to tell you relates to the works of a particular character called Oswald Spengler, who was a mathematician and historian of the 19th and 20th century. He had the theory of splitting up civilizations into epochs and how they all have their cycles their spring, their summer, their autumn and their winter their rise, their peak and their decline but I'm here to talk about the civilization we're currently in which I refer to as the Faustian civilization or the Faustian cycle, which is another term for Western civilization. The origins of the civilization started in Western and Central Europe, starting in 900 AD, around that time. It is a hybrid of the Romanic and Germanic cultures absorbing Christianity as its central religion. Its architectural influence for its Gothic cathedrals come from the primeval forests of Europe. It is derived from the character Faust in Germanic folklore, who makes a pact with the devil to gain knowledge, power and worldly pleasure. Now, as a Germanic pagan, I relate that to Odin making, or Woden making a pact with Loki. And I think that's, from my point of view, what gave birth to the Faustian civilization was when my own ancestors made a pact with the Roman Empire and the religion of Christianity, which has resulted in the Faustian cycle we're in now, because it started in the late Viking Age, remember. 
So, the Faustian spirit is a combination of various things. And as an animist as well, I view civilizations as actually having a spirit of themselves, a consciousness that is separate even from the people that occupy that civilization. They have their own unique personality, in a sense, if you want to put it that way. So, the Faustian spirit is one of infinite striving, driven by a relentless pursuit of knowledge and power and expansion through sheer will. It is never satisfied by what it has achieved and always seeks to push beyond existing boundaries in science, technology and territorial conquest. And there is an infinite striving to it. I mean, if you look at um, the Western powers of colonial Europe, they've just basically conquered the entire world, pretty much. Um, they've spread their influence over the entire world, only probably the Magian, which I'll get into another video, Islamic civilization has given another alternative to. But it's, it's driven by this, I'm just wanting to know absolutely everything about everything. And at wanting to record absolutely every single thing down. I mean, no other civilization has been like this. I mean, not to the extent at least. I mean, if you can see in the shelves behind me, there's loads of books, for example. Um, the idea of basically wanting to record absolutely everything down in pages and pages of pages of thousands and millions of books. That's not something other previous civilizations did. They did do record things down, but not to the extent that, the, you know, they didn't have that first to know absolutely everything about the whole entire universe. So the other point is individualism. Values the individual and his or hers unique talents and abilities. It encourages the pursuit of ambition and individual greatness, often at the expense of collective well-being. And if you look at this, this is very um, interesting because other civilizations, other cultures don't value individualism in the same way um, this civilization does. It really kind of, if you look at the um, timeline specifically of it, it basically pinpoints out loads of different individuals and their achievements and how they've contributed to that basically society rather than from a collective point of view, if you know what I mean. And also it has basically the only civilization that has basically values individual rights in its um, in its government that the fact that we've actually legislated individual rights and and freedoms into actually government itself this did not really exist in other civilizations um, not as other civilizations and cultures have been far more collectivist and about basically what one can do for one's group or one's tribe more than more than basically championing individuals as like um, as great and 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 magnificent and putting them up on a pedestal for example um, the other point is disenchantment of the world the Faustian spirit seeks to control and understand the world through rational inquiry and scientific investigation this leads to gradual loss of the sense of mystery and wonder that characterise earlier cultures, as well as a growing sense of alienation from nature. And yes, if you look at the civilization, particularly in the last 500 years, or and especially the last 250 years, we have basically gone to a very more rational way of seeing the world, this kind of, um, particularly in the, due to re things like reductionism, and this whole idea of, you know, 
scientism, which is basically developed heavily, um, this disenchantment, we no longer have um, this mystery anymore because we've, we've rationalised, we try to rationalise absolutely everything. And when you do that, well, then you're actually missing part of that human experience, which was, which has been there for basically throughout pretty much the whole of human history up until very recently. And this leads us from an alienation of nature because we've developed so much technology now, so much, um, so much shielding off from nature itself, or we can actually almost escape reality in a sense. And well, this gets into the whole idea of transhumanism, which uh, is that the way the civilization is going to end by the trap, by basically us just cutting off ourselves from reality, plugging into a machine and then going up into fucking cyberspace. Well, that does look like a future. I mean, I won't go down that road personally myself, but for many people that does, and that's what this civilization has ended up going to that as the end result of the civilization, because we're, you know, pretty much in its winter phase now. Another thing is linear conception of time and history. And like other cultures that view time as cyclical, the Faustian spirit sees history as a linear progression, building upon the achievements of its predecessors. The belief in progress and perfectibility of human society is a defining feature of Western civilization. So yes, you can weave um, in the Faustian civilization. We have recorded history linearly, and um, where well, it's about progress, it's about building on top of what the try to make it better than basically the. We're never satis it's never satisfied, it never stays the same, it tries to make it almost like, you know, better than, the, than basically than it was a hundred years ago. And this is why in the Faustian timeline, which goes back to about, well, like I said, 900 AD, you see every single century um, is very different from the last one. There's always a change in culture, there's always a change in the architecture, the fashion sense, the... Um, aesthetic, uh, the way of actually perceiving things, the way of thinking about things, the way of like, you know, uh, conceptualizing things. And so, and it, in the art also, you can see this, um, which is very unique art to anywhere else. It's this basically this almost staring off into the infinite. If you look at basically the old Renaissance paintings and the up to the right up to the 1900s, the oil painting was the 1900s, you'll see that um, there's almost a slight emphasis on what's in the distance as well as what's right in front of you. So it's almost like going off into the infinite space, into the, it knows no bounds to that. If you know what I mean. It's basically all about infinite space. And a lot of our, all the other, like, pretty much all the other cultures have, um, well, civilizations, I should say, have had a more cyclical worldview, which I personally think is the organic, natural worldview to have. But this one has more of a linear, and it's kind of like this linear progression going upwards, 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 upwards and... That's, I don't think, is a way to perceive time so much. And if you look in the history books that we have, it's very much like that. It's very uh, linear. It's very always the last, like the, the, the last century has been worse than the, than the current one. So the other remaining feature is emphasis on space and perspective. Faustian spirit is fascinated by space and distant horizons. This is reflected in the development of linear perspective in Western art, as well as the drive to explore and conquer new territory. Like I said, I said before, the art is 
an emphasis on this. It's the whole idea of the infinite space. The like I was saying about the paintings, the um, of Renaissance up right up into the nineteen hundreds. It's very much like that. It's very you know that view into the whole of into the whole. There's no limit to it. There's there's the there's the seeing off right into the distance. And if you look at like classical music, for example, of the 1600s right up to 1700s, 1800s and beyond, it's 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 basically just that expansion expansion of sound, that kind of filling up the whole entire room of basically just sound and going off everywhere and into and it's it's that it's that drive to like conquer new territory. The fact that basically we the civilization has conquered the entire world to the point now where it just wants to go out into space, literally space. It wants to go and conquer other planets, for example. This is the idea of the Faustian. This is not like any other civilization that has existed before. This is what this is this is what makes it unique. And the reason why I'm talking about this now is because this is the current one we're in, and we need to kind of reflect upon this. Uh, the fact that this this um, a civilization that we're in is very different is very important. I want to have a quote by Friedrich Nietzsche, who I think sums up the Faustian soul, the Faustian spirit very well. Life is the will to power, our natural desire to dominate and reshape the world to fit our own preferences and assert our personal strength to the fullest degree. I think that sums it up very well, the kind of that will to power, that desire to basically just like man is now the king of nature, he has conquered everything. Comparisons with other civilizations. So, my first one is, in the Greco-Roman, aka the classical civilization, which I must emphasize is as much people say it is Western civilization, it's not really, it's actually separate, and I'll get to that in a minute. The main symbol or, or theme was being in the here and now, as opposed to the Faustian, which was going into the unknown and beyond. So, like I said before, the Greco-Roman, the classical civilization, was more about being in the here and now, while the Faustian is more about going into the unknown and beyond. Another point is the final world sentiment for the Faustian civilization is socialism, which emerged in its various forms during the 20th century. The classical final world sentiment was Stoicism, while the Indian civilization of Asia was Buddhism. Now this gets into the whole idea of the cycles, and at the end of the winter cycle there's always, an, um, I would say, some kind of what you could say philosophy slash ideology comes in. And with the Faustian, it's been socialism. And I mean socialism in all its various forms, ranging from communism to fascism, Nazism, um, and all the other various forms that it's taken on. And we saw that clearly play out in the 20th century. And we still see, you know, it being somewhat popular today, even. And so, like, and so in the classical world, you have Stoicism, which came about, and this was more... Um, of a, this was more of a, um, like I said, it was kind of like a more rationalistic way of looking at things for, for, for its civilization. And I think there's some, personally, some good points of Stoicism. I won't emphasize on why I think that is, but it's basically kind of like you, about like knowing your own duty, taking your own responsibility of yourself. And then in the Indian civilization of Asia, there was Buddhism, which was very actually atheistic. Um, atheistic in the sense that they did, they did not um, regard deities as real at all. And it was very much um, to go through suffering to basically, to eventually then escape to, um, to, to transcend oneself into samsara. So my next point is, the Enlightenment era for each civilization was brought about in the Faust was brought about in the Faustian by Rousseau 
the classical by Socrates and the and in, for Indian by Buddha. So there's the Enlightenment era, the the more um, the more what you'd call I would personally call going into the more rationalistic way of looking at things because when the civilization started it was more the irrational it was the art it was the religion that basically brought it into being and then basically when it was starting to go into decline the rational came in because that's basically we've built the civilization has completely built itself up where you can basically then you know let's look at this from you know put more you could say reason into this and more logical ways of thinking came about and rationality came about like I said um, and in the Faustian what was, was Rousseau Rousseau gave the birth to, was the father of liberalism for example which um, like I said emphasized human right human human individual rights it emphasized that every man is free for, for to pursue what they want to do in life and to be who they want to be and it basically uh, gave us uh, knowledge about when the state goes too far on its tyranny. And it was very much like a, it gave rise to the French Revolution, which um, basically dismantled the monarchies um, across the civilization itself. And the classical was Socrates, who, you know, probably did similar for his time. Um, I think he emphasized the idea of democracy not sure. He definitely had a. He's definitely a. a I think he was a. I, he was a student of Plato, if I'm not mistaken. And in India, the Buddha, obviously. And uh, so you, I, I'm just making comparisons here. And now I'll get on to my other. The other point is Atlantis is a code. Is code for civilization. And there has been various civilizational Atlantean cycles throughout history. However, we are in the decline or the winter phase of our own, which is the Faustian. Yes. When I mean Atlantis, I'm talking about civilization itself. Atlantis is code for civilization. There has been many forms that Atlantis has taken place. Atlantis was never really a place, it was always an idea. We're in the winter phase of our civilization at the moment, and I don't know when it's going to exactly fall completely, but I'm reckoning sometime this century or next century, maybe. Because I do believe in cycles, and I do think that everything has cycles. Myself included, yourself included, we all have a cycle for us. We are all born, we have our peak, and then we die. This is just life. And so our civilization is a cycle as well. And I just wanted to emphasize this point because I think it's important for us to look around ourselves. Is our civilization at the moment sane? From my eyes, it isn't. Where is the culture now? We keep looking back into the past for inspiration because there's nothing original left anymore. These are questions we have to answer ourselves and they're very actually serious. But I'd like to end this. Thank you for watching. I'm Maximus North of Valkenai Coven. Hails to the gods, the ancestors, and the spirits of the land.